I'm, I'm Josh, and this is our military programs is our department, but the building itself is the guard house you come into. So, like we were talking about, it's kind of a break room for guards in the war against the French, but not so much in the revolution. So today we use them a bit differently, where we show a lot of the different examples of what we might have in the magazine or other things that pertain to military history. So, firearms like muskets and bayonets, some of the other soldiers here tend to focus on, say, engineering, so they've been looking through fortifications and earthwork handbooks and things like that. Uh, one thing I do a lot of, wasn't done here that, but I do it today, is reproducing regimental flags and colors, things that you'll see from different armies during the war, between the French flags, some of the Continental Army, and even a few different British styles. For Continental Dragoon Regiment, I was using this up around New York and uh, New England areas, although it got captured in the original in 1779 with the Pound Ridge in New York. And you can see this, the stripes are the basis for it, with different badges and models upon it. Later on, towards the end of the war, the stars take over more prominence than the stripes for something like 1846 or so. So that's why we have all sorts of different variations. They can be fairly simple like that. We you know lots of units using those, just Sometimes red, sometimes white, sometimes blue. Welcome to the Historic Garden. We are the gardeners here in Colonial Williamsburg. And we are showing you a garden that belonged to a very wealthy man. It would have been behind a very large house and it would have been a collection of luxury vegetables, something like uh, maybe an artichoke or cardoon, and exotic plants like uh, maybe a bay tree that's from the Mediterranean region. So luxury and ease, garden benches for him to sit on, pathways to walk on and enjoy. But you always have to remember that while he is sitting on that garden bench or enjoying his garden, out of the 2,000 people that live here in Williamsburg, in the capital city of Williamsburg in the 18th century, 52% of those 2,000 people are enslaved. So this is the Cooper shop and Coopers make round wooden containers. So buckets, tubs, butter churns, and all the casks of different sizes as well, um, which are what we call barrels today. Um, what I'm doing is making staves for a tub at the moment, so I'm just cutting the curvature to each piece.
welcome to the John Greenhouse store. Check out our various wares for sale. We sell beer, wine, uh, tools, um, blacksmith items, plates, cutlery, anything you might want, uh, we carry it here. two of my harnesses down and two of my harnesses up. So the harnesses are just gathering and sectioning out this material um, so that my threads will move in different units or groups. Um, we could even think of it like classroom, desk on the class in the classroom, essentially. So they're all gonna move in their units. Once we've programmed up what groups they need to move in, we program or we uh, decide how those groups move, down with the treadles at our feet. So with this one, um, it's what's called a direct tie up. Every uh, treadle down at my feet connects to one harness. So if I need two to move, I press down on two with two feet. Um, so when two of them drop, the other two raise. They counter each other out and they balance each other out. So it's a counter balance loom. It's over that half of threads, under this half of thread. Weaving's always over, under, over, under, in some capacity. And so I'm switching my feet between each one, packing those threads, 